What's up guys, welcome back to In The Shop TV. This is my 1955 Chevy truck project, which if you've been watching along, you can see me toiling along with for the past, oh, I don't know how many months. Anyway guys, I hate to ask this of you, I hate to sound like a broken record, and I don't do it that often, but if you're new to the channel, I'm really trying to grow it, and I humbly ask you to please subscribe and like, because I really need all the help I can get. So if you guys like to see this truck get built from its current state, or from the frame up, you got all the other videos, click that little bell notification and click subscribe so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. Anyway, enough of that, on to what we're doing today. If you guys watched the last video, you noticed we installed our engine, and I had a little bit of a concern at the end. The concern was, I got it as far back as I could possibly get it, which is three quarters of an inch from the firewall, but it still might be a hair more forward than I'd like. So, the problem that I'm having is that I'm not sure if the radiator is going to fit once I mount fans on and everything. So, we are going to take our core support, we're going to modify it, we're going to get a radiator that doesn't exactly fit, we're going to get a fan shroud for that radiator that doesn't exactly fit that radiator, and attempt to make all this fit in a truck that it was never designed to be in. Um, yeah, welcome to Hot Rod. They do make a radiator that was custom designed, that's made to fit perfectly right in this vehicle, right here, that's it. The problem with something like that is that, number one, um, it's what's called a downflow radiator, which, which as you can see on the top is a tank and on the bottom is a tank, and the coolant just flows from the top to the bottom, hence the name downflow. Um, I wanna go with a crossflow style radiator, which is where the coolant passes in through the top, goes to the side, comes back through, gets cooled by the fans, and then goes back into the engine. So I want to use a crossflow design, which is generally a wider, more rectangular looking radiator versus that kind of taller looking radiator. Also, as a byproduct of it being shaped like that, I can get two fans on it. Now, there's a great debate on whether two fans or one fan is better. I don't care. That's not the problem for me. With two fans, it's going to create kind of a divot in the center, right, so where I'm having the clearance problem where this water pump is right here. Now, if I have the other style radiator with the fan in the middle, the highest part of the fan, or the crown, if you will, is going to be right on the nose of that water pump pulley, which is the most furthest forward part of the engine that I'm trying to avoid. So if I go with that rectangular style cross flow radiator, I have two fans on either side of it, and it gets becomes concave in the center, which kind of by default create clearance for that water pump pulley. I know this will work. It's just going to require a lot of fabrication and a little bit of ingenuity on our part. But we're making a video. That's what hot rodding is all about to me is trying things and trial and error and having fun along the way and, and the journey. So that's what we're going to do. Enough of me gabbing. Let's get started. All right, guys. So I have our core support sitting right here on a little makeshift workbench. So the radio that I purchased is exactly 28 and three quarters of an inch wide. The reason I went with that size is because if I put something a little bit narrower, maybe 26 inches, that'll fit right inside of this, the frame here, the support. Um, I'm going to be really limited in terms of getting two fans in there because your typical fan is 12 inches. I don't want to run anything smaller with an LS 6.0. So on a two 12 inch fans, that means you're, you know, if you have them touching in the middle, you're a minimum of 24 inches and a lot of the shrouds that come with fans don't really come that narrow or they'll have the fans kind of stacked. And again, remember we're trying to keep space in between the fans to make clearance for our water pump pulley. So I needed something a little bit wider. The next size up is roughly that 28 inch size. So that's what we got, which is 28 and three quarters. Now that works out perfectly because lining up our tape measure here, that's pretty much starting at 1 8 or 3 16 on the inside of each mounting hole, puts us exactly at 28 and 3 quarters. So it's a good width for us. The problem that I have is this inner gusset here um, is going to have to be clearance because, like I said, we're going to start right around here as our 28 and uh, 3 quarters width, so this is going to have to go, obviously. So we're going to get out the little rotary tool and get to work cutting that out on both sides.
do want to take um, a little die grinder and maybe clean up this spot right here. I got an idea halfway through this, which was that. I want to clean this surface off because I think I'm going to get a three inch piece of flat stock and just run it across the bottom here all the way to provide a support or a perch for our radiator to sit on because essentially it's really just going to be sitting on this little half inch strip here. So I went ahead and just cleaned up um, all the primer and rust that was over here so that we have a nice clean surface to weld to. So another thing I've been giving some thought to, I think we're going to drop this off to the powder coater. Traditionally, I'm a guy who likes to, you know, sand it down, throw some paint on it, maybe clear coat and take the budget route if possible. We're all feasible and save ourselves some money and use that money towards other parts of the build where we want to spend. This is one of those parts of the build where I think I want to spend a little bit more money because the core support is going to be right behind the front grill and it is going to see car washes. It's going to see rocks flying up. It's going to see dirt and dust and everything getting blown at it all the time. Um, and, and, you know, who knows what else, but it's going to take some abuse. So I have it resting on its back now and I have this bracket laying around the shop that I want to use as a kind of a center support just so that any weight over here, there's a little bit of bend, but if I just weld a little center support here, let's keep that from happening. Um, the difficulty that I'm going to have is that this is really thin stuff and this is one eighth. So I'm going to have to focus my, um, my MIG electrode on the one eighth part and let it kind of drip onto this stuff so I don't blow it out. So I think what I'm just going to do is just put... Normally, you have to run a solid bead when you want good penetration. In this case, this is not really a structural thing, just a little bit of extra support. I'm just going to shoot a series of tacks um, and kind of stitch weld this in so I don't blow this metal out. All right, so we got that all stitch welded in, and I don't have any deflection at all when I push on it, so I'm pretty happy with that. I went ahead and stitch welded in the bottom of this plate, too, just for a little bit of extra peace of mind. So I know this doesn't look pretty right now, but um, once we get this over to the powder coater, they're going to, you know, media blast everything and it'll take it down to bare metal. And once it's all powder coated up, it'll look a lot better and nice and pretty. So the only thing left for me to do before I take this over to powder coating, I think I'm just going to grab the, the wheel and just kind of take these corners down a little bit because they will be on the inboard side where the engine is. And you know, if you're working in there, you just don't want to bang that and get impaled or whatever. So we'll just round these corners off real quick and that'll be it for the core support. Well, I just heard the UPS guy honking, which is normally what he does whenever he comes. Give me the signal that he's here. So I'm gonna go outside and see if that's him and get my radiator and we'll open it up. So this is the LS line of radiators by Be Cool. Um, there's not any frills, it's not fancy, there's not a high polish on the tanks or anything like that, but it does have the um, inlets and outlets on the correct side for an LS and it has a steam port bung included into the tank here. Since it's not fancy, we're definitely gonna need like kind of a custom cover to go over the top because you don't wanna be looking at that. It's a little bit ugly on a show car or at least on a restoration of this level. You wanna have something nice over that. But it's just a really good, well-made radiator for a really good price. Another thing that you may notice is that it doesn't have the bungs for the transmission cooler in here, um, which is perfectly fine with me because we're gonna be running a separate transmission cooler anyway. So, you know, no frills again, like I said, just a really basic radiator um, that's really well-built. All right, so we got our core support back from powder coating. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Our little shelf that we mounted there looks pretty good. Everything's nice and straight. I decided to go with a gloss black. Um, I think it's just gonna be better for keeping things clean. You know, this, again, this area's gonna be taking a little bit of abuse uh, since it's the front of the vehicle and the grill is gonna be open. So I'm sure you guys have all tried to clean stuff that's flat. It just doesn't clean up as well as something that's gloss. So I think this will work out better. So I went and picked up these generic radiator mount bushings. They're just kind of rubber pads. Um, and they're exactly three inches wide, so they fit right around the tank perfectly. We've got one just perched here right now. So the only thing is they have these little nubs on them, so I guess whatever vehicle they were meant for has a recess or a hole or a divot where it mounts. So we're just going to go ahead and take a razor blade and get that flattened out. Then we'll go ahead and mount these to our core support with some double-sided tape.
So I got some Gorilla double-sided tape. I'm just gonna precariously and carefully place that on the rubber mount. All right, so first of all, the double-sided tape didn't seem to work out too well because it wouldn't adhere to the rubber very well. So what I did was I went and just drilled some holes and uh, screwed the rubber mounts right down to that flat bar that we welded in. So it really kind of came in handy that we installed that piece there. It just gave us a nice perch for our mounts to sit on. All right, it worked out pretty good. I just have it kind of sitting there right now loosely, and it's perfectly positioned, cradling those tanks just where I want them. So I'm gonna go ahead now, and I think what we're gonna do is right back here, where this kind of raised portion of the course port is, the radiator is gonna sit up against it. And as you can hear, um, I don't want that banging. I don't want the metal to metal contact. So I just have some foam weather stripping that I picked up from Home Depot. I'm gonna go ahead and line the back of the course port with it. All right, so I like to show you guys my screw-ups just as much as I like to show you my success because uh, that's the truth of hot rodding is you're going to mess some things up and have to correct it after the fact. Um, what happened here is that when I made this bracket, it's not really a screw-up, but I didn't think ahead. If I had thought ahead, I would have mounted an angle iron to here instead of a flat stock because now I need to create a little bit of a lip on the front of this to keep the radiator in place on the bottom. Um, I could clamp it from the sides and I may still do that. I'm not sure, but I know if I just put um, a nice piece of angle iron here, keep it from slipping out that way, and then we'll have our top mount up here to hold it in place. It's not going anywhere. So, you know, a little bit of thought ahead of time would have saved me from now having to cut a piece of angle iron and mount it to that. So with all the welding projects I've been doing over the years, I've accumulated a nice little pile of scrap stuff laying around. And this is a length of angle iron that is aluminum. So that should work out just perfectly. It's uh, one inch width by um, a sixteenth of an inch thick. And I don't need any more than that to hold that sucker in there. So we got ahead and made a mark, let's get this cut off. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosely set our piece of aluminum angle in position. And then I'm gonna go ahead and clamp it with some vice grips and get it marked out and drilled. All right, so our angle piece, our holder bracket is in and fastened. I just shot a couple of self-tappers in there to hold it in place, and I'll wind up redrilling those holes and putting bolts and nuts in there later, probably stainless so they don't rust out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the radiator and drop it in there and see how it fits so far. All right, guys, check it out. That is a perfect fit. I'm really happy with how that looks. The radiator's not fastened on the top. It's kind of loose, but it's not making any noise against the back of the core support because of the foam strips. The rubber pads in the bottom are elevating it up off the core support. And that front bracket is perfect. It's not going to let it slip out. It was cut perfectly right to size. All right, so my fans and my radiator shroud are in the mail. They'll be here any minute now. Um, I'm not going to fabricate a mount for the top yet because I kind of want to do something. I don't know, maybe some custom aluminum will bend something. But for right now, uh, I'm not going to do anything to hold it in there since we're not driving the car, obviously. Just wanted to make sure everything fits. This is really about getting the right clearance, as you can see, between the water pump pulley and the radiator, um, which is really tight at the moment. So um, I'm going to get the fans in, the shroud in, and see how much clearance we have, and we'll go from there. In the meantime, I put a piece of double-sided tape here. I'm just going to peel this off and put some foam right in there, because as you can see, there's kind of a lip right here. So when I do fabricate a cover or even some temporary straps for now, um, I don't want, you know, there's this divot. I want to put something in there to block it. That'll come up a little bit higher than that to give it a little bit more cushion. All right, so we got a little piece of foam mounted there. Again, the purpose of this, in case that wasn't clear, we've got about an eighth of an inch pad right on the top of that channel right there. That'll give us a little bit of cushion. And we do put our brackets over the top, so we're not just touching the metal, we're touching something soft. Um, I may need more, I don't know, but we'll see how we go from there. I think it's gonna be okay. All right, so our fan has just arrived, and I want to talk about these for a second. So a lot of people will go with a cheaper eBay fan or something that they find on Amazon, and I tend to be one of those people, actually, just because I'm curious. I want to see if, for my money, 
something will work. But in this case, I'm a little bit leery and here's why. Based on the little schematic that they give you when you order these things online, they'll give you, um, you know, the layout of the dimensions of the fan. Almost all of the eBay and Amazon fans I looked at that were really cheap were exactly the size that I need. And remember, we have really tight quarters that we're working with here and we have to like keep this as tight as possible. So these fans, although they say they're 12 inch fans, are actually a little bit bigger than the rest of them, which might end up actually hurting me here because they may not fit. All right, so good news and bad news. The good news is upon uh, initially inspecting these, these are really super quality fans. I'm very pleased with how well made they are. Um, you just, just holding it in your hand, you can tell right away that it's a really beefy motor uh, in comparison to the you know, cheaper fans that I've played with in the past. So I'm really pleased with that in, in and of itself. Unfortunately, I think we're gonna have a fitment problem because at the narrowest point where it kind of comes flat on the side, we are exactly at 12 and a half instead of 12. So I think when they're calling it a 12 inch fan, they're meaning the actual fan blade itself is 12 inches. Uh, but with this, you know, kind of shroud on the outside of it puts us to 12 and a half. My, the area that I have, the clearance from tank to tank inside that radiator is 24 and a half. So I think we're gonna be a half inch too big on either side. All right, so I just kind of loosely held them up to the radiator with my hands and I guess better news. The first things first, they do clear the water pump pulley with no problem. Um, I kind of lucked out because the engine is lower in relation to the radiator. So, you know, fans are a circle. So the highest point of it will be up higher than where the water pump pulley is. So we have clearance there. So um, that's the whole main point of this project, doing this first in this order was to see if we have clearance for our water pump pulley and we do. I cannot fit them side by side without a shroud because they will just be cockeyed because part of it will be sitting on the tank and the core is a little bit recessed as it is. So if I put one in the upper corner on the upper left-hand side right there, and I put one on the lower right-hand side, which makes sense for flow because water flows from coolant flows that way to this way, um, they will fit without a shroud perfectly um, with like without a millimeter to spare. So that is an option. We can do that. We can just go directly to the radiator without a shroud. I really want to use the shroud though, because it does help a lot, especially when you're sitting at idle, which is usually when you have most of your uh, overheating problems anyway. Now, the problem that I have with the shroud is that it's 24 inches wide and we have exactly 24 and a half inch clearance from tank to tank. So the shroud will fit uh, within, um, the, within the confines of the two tanks with a quarter of an inch of spare on either side. The two fans, when you put them together, will sit a quarter of an inch outside of the two tanks. Now, I'm not sure if that's gonna work in terms of how the fans mount on the core. Will it be kind of half-assed with them sticking off to the side and not really cooling uh, within the holes? I'm not sure. So, so the shroud will be here any second. We'll open it up and we'll see. All right, guys, I'm gonna opt to mount them directly to the radiator. I really wanted to use a shroud, but it's not gonna happen. The shroud that I found, which is the closest size to this radiator, is about a half inch short on each side. Um, and it's about a half inch short top to back, so I'd have to rig up some kind of mounting bracket for the top or the bottom. Um, and the fans kind of hang over the cooling tanks by about an inch on both sides with a big gap here. Um, it just, it looked kind of ridiculous to be honest with you. So my method here, or my thinking is that I'd rather stick with the really high quality fans that don't fit the shroud that doesn't really fit the radiator anyway, then keep the shroud that doesn't fit and look silly with two cheaper fans in it. I don't know, it's just my logic. I figure I can always make another shroud later or buy something or have something custom made for me, but I would much rather stick with the fans that I know pull a lot harder. And I think that'll, you know, that'll weigh more in the long run based on what we want to do rather than having these cheap fans just to fit a shroud, you know, for cosmetic purposes, I guess. All right, guys, so I was never really a fan of those type of radiator ties where they hold the fans on. It's kind of like that really thin, cheesy um, plastic strip where there's like a, a coin type thing that's wafer that slides over them and holds them on. What I like to do is use a regular zip tie, which is a lot stronger in my opinion. I like to take a washer and just slip it through down the zip tie like that. And then you'll find your hole on the other side. And just like that, you come right through and it doesn't mar up the radiator fins. Then you just take the other end of a zip tie, a straight zip tie, and you just close off the end and it is rock solid which is important because I think those other ones, they don't hold as well, they're kind of loose and that's what makes them damage fins and um, the cores and whatnot because you just have that movement. These will not, I only have two on right now, nothing in the back yet and these just don't move at all. Again, I wanna put a shroud eventually and do this um, 
what I consider to be the right way because the shroud will help you at low speeds. But for now, this is gonna be just fine and uh, I like this whole method a lot better. All right, so that makes for a nice clean install. Let's get this set in place. All right, so we fit, we are looking good, and we got the clearance that I was very worried about. When you get right on top of it, it looks like it's about an inch and a quarter away, which is plenty of room in real world practices. Um, there's no top support yet. We have to fabricate something to custom fit this, so it's just gonna kind of fall forward if I let go of it. So I'm just gonna like loosely zip tie this right now, just to hold it from falling. That's hot rodding guys, I'm just glad that it fits. I know the shroud didn't work out, but I think that, you know, it's something that we can remedy at a later date, and it's just, it just wasn't feasible. The, the shroud that we picked out didn't fit on there right. It looked stupid, um, it just wasn't the way to go. So this will cool, whether it'll overheat when it's sitting still a stoplight or something, I don't know. I don't think it will because these, again, these fans are really super powerful, so that'll make up for the loss of the shroud, I feel. Um, but only time will tell. Not everything works out perfectly all the time, guys. That's the nature of the beast. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I'll try to get to all your comments. I think people will like fab up a custom top cover for that way you support. Something like that. I don't know. We got a bunch of stuff to do. See you in the next one.